Good morning and welcome. The legal voters of the town of Hardwick, Vermont are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Hardwick Elementary School in said town of Hardwick on Tuesday, March 5th, 2024 at 10 o'clock in the forenoon to act on the following business. The election of town school board and union school district number 26, which is Hazen, directors shall be voted on by Australian ballot. The polls will be open from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. If special accommodations are necessary because of physical disabilities, please can't have someone come in and tell us because the town office is not open at this point because everybody's here. Article 1, to elect a moderator to head said town meeting and for the year ensuing. What is your pleasure? I have a nomination for Ori Zansworth. Are there any others? And nominations do not need to be seconded. All those in favor of electing Orrise Ainsworth for moderator to govern town meeting in the year ensuing, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries, and I thank you. Article 2. Shall the town accept the town report year ending June 30, 2023? and there were extra copies on that first voting table when I came in if you need one. What is your pleasure? I have a motion to accept the town report as presented. Is there a second? And a second? Any discussions, questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the report as presented, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries and the report is accepted. To elect all town officers and district number 26 directors as required by public laws of Vermont and the town charter. Again, the select board and union school district 26 directors are voted by Australian ballot. The first office up is first constable and that is currently vacant. Anyone want to make a nomination or nominate themselves? We have a nomination for Larry Hamill. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Larry Hamill as first constable for a one year term, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries and Larry is elected. Second constable is also vacant. Any nominations or do you wish to nominate yourself? If not, the select board will try to fill that position. Nobody's jumping at it. We'll move on to town agent, which is also vacant. Do we have anyone for town agent that wishes to be elected? nominate themselves or someone nominate a candidate? I nominate Rob, Lewis. I nominate Rob Lewis is nominating himself. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Rob Lewis as town agent for one year, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries, and Rob is elected for a one-year term. Surveyor of wood, bark, and lumber for a one-year term, that is currently vacant as well. Is there a nomination or a volunteer? Hearing none, that's another one that the select board will have to appoint. Tree Warden, I'm going to screw this guy's name up, I know it is Jeffrey Fairs currently serving. What is your pleasure? We have a nomination for Jeffrey Fairs. Are there any other nominations? This is for Tree Warden. Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Jeffrey Fairs as Tree Warden for one year, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. Jeffrey is elected for one more year as tree warden. Cemetery trustees for Main Street, Maple Street, Fairview, Sanborn, Hardwick Street, West Hill, and Hardwick Center. 
Some of these have their own trustees and then the select board. And if you wanted, I'm just making a, rec a suggestion. What has happened in the past is we do the same old board. And that would put the cemeteries with trustees, Main Street, Maple Street, and Fairview, and the remaining are the select board, and that's currently who is in charge of the cemeteries. We have a nomination to approve the same old board. Any second? Oh, nominations don't need a second. All those in favor of the same old board for the cemetery trustees, a one-year term, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And the cemetery will be the same board. The fire department is also listed in your book, and those are usually elected as a block. Are there any nominations? And they're all one-year terms. When there's a nomination, can we repeat the nomination by how many and for whom? Okay. If I know their names. <laughs> okay. What is your pleasure on filling the position of fire department officers? I have a nomination from Dave Shepard for a block, and that's found on the bottom of page four. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing the fire department as a block is found on the bottom of page four in our book. Please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries and we have the same officers. The next one is library trustees for a three-year term. Are there any nominations? Your name, ma'am? I'm Jody Smith, and I would like to nominate Lauren Honigan. Repeat the name. Lauren Honigan. Lauren Honigan? Yep. Okay. And I have another nomination. Okay. <laughs> I'd also like to nominate Abra Riggs. I'm only doing one at a time. One at a time. All right, we'll take the first one. Because they're different. I have a nomination for Lauren Honigan from Jody Lou Smith. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in electing Lauren Honigan for a three-year term as library trustee, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And Lauren is elected for a three-year term. The next one is a, also a three-year term. Are there any nominations? Jody. I'd like to nominate Abra Griggs. April Griggs. Okay, Abra Griggs for a three-year term as library trustee. Are there any other nominations? Dave Shepard? We have a nomination for Ross Conley, and I've already forgot the first name. What was the first name? Abra Griggs. Ross is already a trustee. Ross is already on the board? Oh, okay. Ross is already on the board, so we don't need to nominate him again. He can only hold one seat. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Aubrey Griggs? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I hit my term limit. I got to take two years off. I'll be around. Did she answer your question? Okay. And back to mine. All those in favor of electing Aubrey Griggs as library trustee for three-year term, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries and Aubrey is elected. The next position is grand jury, juror, currently held by Raymond Bellavance. Are there any candidates? Any nominations? We have a nomination from Dave Shepard for Raymond Bellavance. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Raymond Bellavance for a one-year term as grand juror, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 4. 
shall the town have its current taxes collected by the town treasurer? What is your pleasure? So moved. I have a motion to approve from Kevin Moore. Is there a second? Rob? And Rob Lewis with a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of having the town collect taxes by the town treasurer, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 5. Shall the town vote a budget of $4,018,083 to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town and authorize the select board to set a new tax rate sufficient to provide the same? What is your pleasure? We have a motion from Ron Wiesen. Is there a second? second. And a second from Dave Shepard. Does the board wish to? I'll clear the deck and. You don't have to. You don't have to. Well, I'm just going to take this because I got to catch up. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Town Meeting 2024. I just want to say a few things, um, highlight a few projects that are ongoing, and give an update on some of the bigger projects. <clears throat> we are very much still in recovery mode. It's been nine months since the flood, and efforts to recoup recovery spending from our federal partners is ongoing. Each week, we have meetings with FEMA staff to follow up on and fulfill requests for essential elements of information for each of the projects that have been created by FEMA grant managers. To date, we have one project obligated for repayment, but we have yet to see the funds enter our account. There are several larger recovery projects that will take time to complete. Days and weeks after the flood, town staff requested hydrologic studies from our state partners for larger river crossings. The information requested in a hydrologic study will allow us to request engineering services for the replacement and upsizing of culverts and bridges lost or damaged in the flood. The process we have to follow is time consuming but essential if we expect to receive reimbursement. As we work on recovery, some of our long-standing projects continue to move forward. The Yellow Barn has been fully leased to a development corporation to complete and operate. Many are mistaken when they think our property tax dollars are bankrolling that project. The investment that was made by many, the investment was made by many and the payback is in the long game. Hardwick will be the beneficiary of that project for, a life, for its lifetime through tiered pilot repayments. The library project continues to move forward and will be a great addition to our community as the central nervous system of information gathering and sharing. I believe this will be the year for the replacement of the pedestrian bridge. The July flooding changed some of the existing conditions, but teams working on the project were able to adapt and continue to move forward, and the bid documents are being prepared as we speak. I hope to be walking across that bridge by the end of the year. The final and most important project I want to mention is the rebuilding of our wastewater treatment facility. The wastewater plan is related to every form of growth <clears throat> and development in our village compact. If our plant cannot treat waste streams it receives, we cannot continue to grow. Without growth, the burden falls on the existing ratepayers to keep the plant operating. I will do everything in my power to ring the bell for financial and technical assistance to rebuild and or relocate the facility, making it more resilient for future catastrophes, and in doing so, make it available for economic growth. Some of our smaller projects are equally important for the future of the community. We are working on getting the Act 250 permit opened up and amended in order to blast and crush our own stay mat at our Route 14 pit. Crushed gravel and stone was, highly so was a highly sought after resources was a highly sought after resource for the rebuilding and resurfacing of the roads. Days, weeks, and months by all towns in the area and stockpiles dwindled, rap dwindled rapidly. If we can produce it closer and more cost effectively, we will all benefit. I'd now like to thank a moment to thank and honor the many community members that, that year after year show up for the greater good of Hardwick and its residents. Without the community players this town has, the look and feel of this community would be a lot different. In closing, I want to express my gratitude to all of you. Your willingness to come to the discussion about the future of our community is what makes it strong. We are all in the driver's seat of our reality. Don't ever think you're not. 
the most important thing for me to do in my position is to find solutions to community problems. If I don't know about them, I can't help fix them. Please know that I am available to all of you and your ideas to make Hardwick the best place it can be. Good morning. Uh, first off, big thank you to David Upson and his staff for shepherding the town through another year, a particularly um, trying year, in, at least in July and a few other times. Um, so, the motion on the floor is for um, a $4 million budget, and uh, this is the biggest budget increase that we've, as a select board, have proposed in my time on the board. And so I just want to um, go through it very briefly with you. I've been warned in the past that you all can read and read the town report before you show up. So I'm not going to go into nitty gritty detail. But if you'd like to follow along, I'm going to look at page 11. Um, <clears throat> and on the bottom of page 11, there's a budget summary, which breaks things down pretty nicely. And um, so I'll just go through that briefly. The highway department, uh, we're proposing that it remains pretty flat. The police department has um, a bit of an increase. This is for uh, salaries and benefits, primarily. Um, the next one is the office expenses. This covers um, most of the uh, expenses for employees and needs uh, for everyone who works in the Memorial Building. and. This is a pretty big increase that we're proposing this year. Uh, a lot of this is due to increases in the cost of health insurance, other benefits, and also we're proposing with this budget to add uh, an additional half-time FTE to our, um, to our staff. And this is largely an administrative role to really help deal with and stay on top of uh, the um, funding requests that OP was just talking about. So there's a lot of administrative work that goes into chasing down and, and really securing the federal funds that we need to continue the rebuild, which is going to be a years long process. Um, moving along, payroll remains fairly flat, fire department pretty flat, line items um, has a pretty big bump and uh, just speaking off, let's say without flipping there, we have um, increases to our capital equipment fund because the cost of equipment has continued to increase. We have uh, our, the payments on the library bond um, hit the budget this year. There's an increase in library budget and there's an increase in the rescue budget. I think those are some big drivers for those line items. Um, and I will also just note that though this 7.55% increase seems pretty big, when we first started working on the budget, we started off at about a 14% increase. So we feel we've tightened to some degree, but not to a degree that will diminish our ability to meet the needs of the town and um, continue to try to help the town grow. So with that, Sorry if that was lengthy, but Andy Hale has his hand up. Yeah, so just so people understand a little bit better about the part-time position. No. Uh, that's to increase hours of the current position. Um, and it's not only just paperwork, it's to deal with flood, flood issues. It's the zoning and current zoning administrator. Uh, but there's a, a whole slew of new regulations that are coming down, uh, down uh, on river corridors and such. So it's, uh, it's there's, yeah. a, there's a ton of mandated paperwork um, that someone has to do and and that's the best way we feel to uh, to, to deal with it I guess that's like stand up so it's not a new position it's additional hours for the current position um, and it has a lot to do with the flood river corridor, new legislation is coming down, new maps that have to be made. Any of you that live anywhere near water are going to see new regulations. Uh, permit Permitting is going to be more complicated, so 
We certainly need someone to deal with that, and we're very fortunate to have Kristen in that office now. Um, so it's not like we're going to hire someone new. Um, we're just telling her she needs to work more. So. Yeah, we're actually going to pay her for what she's doing too, so that's not a bad thing. But it's not a, we're not creating a new position or anything like that. Sorry, Nick, who do we, in the back? I was just curious if there was a way to recoup that money for the added um, so hours through the grant, any there, grants? There, yeah, there is um, the ability to recoup some of our uh, office expenses, our, our salaries. Um, for the, some of the FEMA expenses. Okay, thank you. Here you are, sir. Is it here? Are we in the discussion phase of the budget? We are, and ORISE is asking that you stand and give your name, Rob. Uh, Rob Lewis, East Hardwick, Center Road. Are we in the discussion phase of the budget at this point? We certainly are. Okay. I, I would like to propose a couple of things. We as a community are consistently being asked to bear the burden for tough times and the state has also asked us to bear the burden for tough times. So keep that in mind as I propose what I'm going to propose. Now, historically, our fund balance is typically maintained at approximately 10 to 15% it appears by looking at the 2023 fund balance, we're in excess of 20%. Is that correct? One moment, please. She's not from Hardwick. Yeah, can we, can we, oh, Arise can do it. If there are no objections, Casey Rowell will give us an answer, but she is not a resident of Hardwick, so we need to give her permission. So if there are no objections, I will grant her that permission. May I ask what we're giving her permission for? To answer your question or any other budget questions okay. that should come up. Not seeing any, Casey, you may speak. Get the mic first. Because they can't hear you otherwise. We're here? Yeah, we're to Casey. Um, at the end of 2023, our fund balance was just under 980000 um, which based on our current budget is about 24%, you are correct. Um, our fund balance policy says we want to have a minimum of 15% for a goal of 20%. However, we do project using 125,000 of that for the current fiscal year budget. We anticipate using another 50,000 of that in fiscal year 25, the budget we're looking at, and we also have some money committed to the pedestrian bridge. So once we back that all out, we are gonna be around 15 to 18%. It's just that at the end of 23, we're at 24%, but we're gonna use some of that this year, we're gonna use some of it next year, and we have some of it committed as well. So we will be down towards the 15% goal that we outline in our policy.
Thank you for that. Uh, I still disagree with 18 percent. Uh, so I am going to put on the floor uh, a proposal or a motion, I should say, if you'll bear with me. I had a dog here. <laughs> Would you refer me to the uh, fire department budget, our capital cost? Eighteen. No, that's capital equipment. Thank you. Capital fire Would you hold that, please? Um, I am a huge uh, supporter of the equipment schedule. Uh, I believe it's absolutely necessary. But since we are dealing with trying times, uh, I would propose that we take 75,000 out of the capital budget to reduce taxes. I would also. Rob, are you taking it from the capital fire equipment purchase? The current year set aside. I believe is oh, 145,000, and total is spent is 145. The funds set are 150, leaving an account balance of 8,650. Right. Okay. And I I realized that that would put that year in a deficit. However, in 2025, there is no. Uh, intent to set aside additional funds. Yes, there so, is. If you read it, the zero is under spent. The set aside for 25 is 175. My mistake. Thank you. So are you making a motion to reduce the budget or I just a suggestion that they do something different internally? I would prefer to suggest to the board that they rework that number. Okay, then I'll sit down and you tell the board. <laughs> uh, however, on the fire equipment budget, uh, we, <clears throat> we have to have fire, and I know the equip, Tom does a tremendous job uh, with managing the equipment, but I would also like to see uh, 25,000 taken from that and put back into the budget for a reduction of taxes. And a total, I look on page 24, and again, the fund balance is almost a million. And I've had an explanation for much of that, but I would propose that you look at a further reduction of $200,000 from the fund balance to reduce taxes for the people of Hartwood. Um, thank you. So uh, just in response, um, we, the select board did spend a fair amount of time working on the capital equipment purchase schedule because it, we, we did push out some purchases and decide we could um, wait on replacing police cruisers and um, uh, do, 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 do. we push something else out too. 
Oh, the smaller trucks could be replaced on a longer interval. Um, so, and I guess I will further say that the that the capital equipment schedule is is really it, other than the funds set aside into it for this year. It's it's really there just for planning purposes. Like we're not committing to anything beyond what's written for this year, but in order to try to plan, we try to map out the next 20-ish um, years. Of course, the farther you get into the future, the less reliable this is gonna be, but it just gives us a way to plan. Um, and especially, so this is one of the things where the costs of trucks have continued to increase, um, and we're also um, faced with a situation where in the past we could we could order a new truck, we could get it in, uh, we could trade in the old truck, and we would be down a truck for a few months while the new truck was getting a body and the plow frames and everything on it. Now that's changed from a few months to basically 12 months. So we'd be without it. If we continued with that, we'd be without a truck for a full year. So we are really moving into a, a phase where we're gonna need to buy a new truck, and instead of trading the old one, we need to keep that old one until the new one is actually here which is another reason that we didn't want to cut the capital equipment fund too much because we're expecting we'll see less money when we sell our old trucks outright instead of trading them. But in 2025, you're not proposing any new purchases. That's correct. 2025, we're not proposing to have any new purchases. Um, but if... Uh, we plan to continue to contribute because we know we're replacing trucks on a certain schedule. And if you look out to 2029, we get close to zero, and 2030, we actually are a little bit negative. I understand your point, but we are being asked to bear the burden today. And I'm suggesting that maybe that burden can be lessened by deferring some of those costs to another year. Yeah. And so, I understand about the truck repair. Yeah. Do we not have a mechanic in the town garage that maintains our vehicles for us? We do not. So we, years ago, uh, we were able to hire mechanics who would come to the town garage. Um, the trucks currently are so computerized and requiring um, proprietary software to access um, the computers in order to fix them that we literally cannot have some an independent mechanic come work on them. It just isn't effective. It, it's it is a real issue. It's a it's definitely frustrating. It's frustrating to see the expense of the trucks, the expense of the repairs. Um, we haven't found any good way to avoid that. I mean, I think the same is true for most of us with our cars. Like, there are a lot of things are, are just more computerized and fewer things that you could fix at home. I, um, I so, stand but to by your, my thoughts. And, so I, I definitely appreciate your thoughts, and this is the, the line of thinking that the select board has taken when looking through this budget. Do we really need to set this aside? I would, I would say that using the model that we use of saving up for our major purchases instead of borrowing for them, uh, what has happened in the past is if we don't continue to steadily set money aside, you're right, you do push it out, and then you need to catch up another year. The trouble is, it's more painful in that year where you have to do the catch up. So, but, but to your point about the uh, fund balance, um, I would say that's something, at least as one voter in the town of Hardwick, I'd be willing to see a skinnier fund balance for a little while um, if people wanted to set. It's not a select board position, but just me. <laughs> I'd be willing to set some of the fund balance to offset some of the taxes. We have been doing that. We were just trying to 
ramp it down so that we didn't deplete the fund balance. As Casey stated, the, um, with the things we plan to spend out of the fund balance, uh, partly offsetting taxes and partly the swinging bridge, um, that does bring us the fund balance down to that 15 to 18% after we do that. But if, if people want to see that fund balance land a little skinnier, that would be good to know. Uh, Larry was, had his, was up first, I think, and then Danny. Good morning. I'm uh, Lawrence Hamill from East Hardwick. Um, uh, just to, uh, for the record, I want to vote no on the budget, and let me tell you why. Um, people call me because they don't want to come here and stand up amongst their peers and look like the bad guy. I've run for office. Most people uh, tell me they don't come to town meeting or they don't vote because their vote doesn't matter. If they can't come here and speak in front of their, uh, their peers, uh, there's no point in it. So uh, it's more than just me speaking. People talk to me about a lot of things, uh, and we've had enough. We've had enough with the increases. Every, we know everything costs more, but we need to sharpen our pencils and cut a little bit. We're told to live within our budgets. We think the town and the state should live within their budgets. We are trying to retire. We're trying to decide whether we can afford to live in Hardwick or in Vermont at all. Vermont's got one of the highest tax rates in the country, and Hardwick has the highest tax rate in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, there's a lot of things here. I won't get into two specifics, but the most thing uh, people talk to me about is uh, the library. We've got $161,000 for the library budget, and then another $48,000 for the bond payment. That adds up to quite a lot. This, the project up there was supposed to be funded by other money. Um, and there are places that I see in here that can be cut, and uh, I'd like to uh, basically vote no, and I'm gonna speak again about the uh, appropriations. I have some objections with those two, but I won't go on. Um, thank you. Thanks, Larry. Hang on a sec. Hi, I'm Steve Sampson, and to follow up on Larry's thing, if we re if we reject the budget, when would the next opportunity be presented to us, and if how to deal with that? Steve, we are voting on the budget when we're done discussing today. Yeah. Well, so if, it's if reject, you I'm have what? Hypothetical. Okay, if it's voted down, then whenever the select board gets around to it. But the floor can also do amendments to the budget and give a new bottom line if that is your intent. I just, I'm not advising it. I'm just telling you the facts of life because as moderator, I feel I have to. Um, their current budget is four million and change. I don't have it right in front of me. Four million eighteen thousand and eighty-three dollars. But if someone here wants to do the work for the select board, so we go away from here with a budget, someone could make an amend amendment to the budget. That would be discussed and voted on, and then we that would be if it passed, that would become the main budget item again. Would but that you, be happened today? We're voting from the floor. You could do that today. That's the process. I'm only explaining the process. I'm not making any recommendations, but I wanted to make sure that the voters out there understand their rights and the process that I, as moderator, have to control to well, keep calm. But all I ask is what opportunity would people have to vote on the next amended budget? There would have to be another special town meeting. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Yep. Thank you. David Shepard in from Hardwick in Opie's opening statements I heard him say something about potentially moving the public the sewage treatment plant did I hear that wrong? No, that's correct. Where would you, 
where could it be moved to? I mean, that would be a massive undertaking. So the, the facility is flooded four times, and um, it's substantially there. The we have hired engineers. Um, also, the Army Corps of Engineers were hired by FEMA to um, determine the substantial damage. And if it's over 51 percent substantially damaged, which it likely is, I don't know why it's taking so long for them to determine this. Um, we would be required to, to elevate it or relocate it. And when I say relocate, elevating it is part of that project. So we wouldn't necessarily move it, but we would elevate it, level it, elevate it, and rebuild it. That is the most cost effective. Moving it would be further, like moving it up into one of the lagoons, where that would be costly. So something needs to happen because every time it floods, we have $500,000 worth of repairs we need to make to meet permit. So would you do a feasibility study or get a grant to do a feasibility study or? We, um, we got a, a, a no interest, 100% forgivable loan by the state to do an engineering study on the scoping and planning of relocating. It, that's happening right now. Is that going to go on this year? That's, that's an ongoing project. But it, the scoping is happening. Yes, the scoping is happening. But in terms of like putting a shovel in the ground, we're five years out. So let's hope it doesn't flood again. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Just a minute. Are there any other speakers that wish to speak? And then I'll get back to you, Rob. Now, now the sewer, Ray Bellavance of Hydric. Now the sewer plant, where it sits now, it's right over our water system anyhow. Maybe you don't think so, but the water runs underneath there. Uh, table. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are aquifers under lots of places. Is that what you mean? Where the sewer plant sits, where uh, it's uh, it's a few uh, hundred feet from the water plant that we pump from, out of. from the wells. Yes. Yes. All right, and it's leaking into the, that. It is. Is we, this uh, this is news to me? If the oh, sewer plant's leaking into the water, know, that's not something fine, I'm yeah. aware of. But. Uh, Did you do a taste got a test? remark here. Oh boy. Hold on. I said, what'd you do, Ray? Do a taste test? On the water. Can't drink it. So the lagoons just went through relining. The, the liners that were in there weren't compromised, but they reached their useful age. That facility is, is completely um, enclo like enclosed, okay. contained. Where we do get groundwater um, infiltration is our collection system, our aging collection system. So the pipes from the houses to the plant, there is, I, I assume, some, some leaking and some cracking and breaking of, of the pipes. But the facility itself, there's no evidence that it's polluting the groundwater. Well, the uh, liners have been leaking for years. The what? The liners have been leaking for years. We have a, a new liner that was installed last summer and the second lagoon, the first lagoon is empty right now. And we, April 1st, the construction company is going to come in and reline that lagoon. Um, I'll, if you want to respond. I, I just want to note that, um, that the, the sewer plant and water are both critical infrastructure for village residents, but also for the town as a whole, because they support our downtown and our industri industrial parks. However, I just want to, just for clarity, those budgets are, are separate, um, and they're paid out of water and sewer rents. So uh, just, just to be clear, it's a good discussion. This is the time we're all together, but this is not part of that budget. Uh, yes, and, and the, and the, we have, yes, we, 
we, uh, the, the lagoons are not leaking and the sewer plant is not leaking. When it floods, it is true that during the flood in July that um, the water washed through there and into the Lamoille River. Um, not through the lagoons, but through the headworks. So about a 72-hour period, the plant was without any capacity to do any treatment, and so we were discharging directly into the Lamoille. But they weren't, the lagoons were not leaking, just to be clear. Why did what? Why? Sorry, I don't understand. How come the water and sewer bill went up so much? Oh, the bill, how come the bills yeah. go up? So the, the water and sewer rents are set by the select board every, I think it's July. Um, you're, if you're interested in helping with that process, I would invite you to, to participate. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak before I allow Rob to speak a second time? Over in the center there. Stand and state your name, please. Hi, Eric. Um, I'm Meredith Holch. I live in East Hardwick. And I felt like the answer you just gave to this gentleman was a bit evasive. He wanted to know why it went up, and you told him when it was decided without saying why. So I so, just, just would love it if you could elaborate a little on your answer. Thank um, you. Why water and sewer rates have gone up? Yeah. Um, well, they cover the cost of running the system, basically. I mean, it, it's... Uh, I don't have all that. Un I didn't come. I didn't come prepared to discuss the water and sewer budget. But there are there are regular operating costs. Um, the sewer plant is much more expensive to run than the water system. But um, yeah, there's regular maintenance. We also have uh, a bond payment um, because we uh, we actually are. are we're in the middle of a major um, renovation project at the sewer plant when it was flooded um, this summer. So we have, a, we have a bond payment, we have just the regular ongoing expenses. I didn't, I honestly don't recall that it went up a lot. It usually doesn't, but I don't have it at my fingertips. Uh, does anyone else wanna speak before Ray speaks again? Okay, just a minute, Ray. Rob, you were on the main budget, right? Okay, so we'll let Raymond speak in regards to this conversation. Well, every time you get a, a water bill, they say you overuse in the sewer. Now, how the heck do you know if it's an overuse? It could be outside water and plants and stuff, but you, you charge us more for the sewer because you say it's overused. Okay, so I think I understand what you're getting at now. So um, w after we put in water meters ooh, five years ago, roughly, I don't remember exactly, we did shift the billing so that there's a base rate that covers a certain amount of water and sewer and then anything over that, there's a per gallon overage charge. And it is true that when you go over, the only thing that's metered is the water because it's the only thing we can reasonably meter. And um, we, have to, we just make the assumption that what comes in goes out. Um, you're right that it is possible, of course, that the um, water that you're using is not going down the sewer pipe. You're right. However, it's also possible that it is. And we have no way to measure the flow on the sewer, so we measure the flow on the water. Yeah, but you ain't got no uh, meter on the, on the sewer, so how in the heck can you tell what's going in and what's going out? You just You're want to right. charge just anything? Uh, I'm no, I don't mean to be evasive. I'm just trying we're, to. We're just trying to. Yes. We're just trying to yeah. balance the yeah. budget. So it costs something to run the plant, and we're trying to spread that cost out as equitably as we can. Uh, so. You're. You're right that we don't meter the sewer side. We only meter the water side, and we assume that the that it's the same the inflow and the outflow. But you still charge for the sewer. We do charge for the sewer. It don't make sense. Thank okay. you for Duly answering noted. that, though. Yes. Okay. okay, now, Rob, it's your turn again. A short oratory before I get into my motion. I have been where you folks are, 
and I know how hard you work to make the budget as palatable as possible. I hearken back to the fact that we are in unusual times, but I think there is more that can be done. And since we are potentially facing a significant increase in school taxes that will probably double the percentage that you are asking us to approve today, I would make the mo following motion. I would propose that the select board revisit the budget and provide a reduction in the fund balance in addition to what is scheduled now of $300,000. So, I have, a, I have a response or a nope. question, but you go ahead. Okay, Rob, are you proposing an amendment to the budget or are you just proposing that this group tell the select board we want them to take money out of the reserve and put it towards taxes? I was proposing an, I was proposing an amendment. Okay, and what was your dollar, the only thing you can amend is the bottom line on page 11. Before you have me do that, can, can we just clarify that the fund balance to offset the tax rate is separate from the, from the That's budget? what I'm getting at. Okay. Okay, the only thing that we can amend is how much money they spend. You can do an, a, a straw poll, so to speak, to say that yes or no, this group agrees to put more than three hundred, put another three hundred thousand towards the taxes. Is what I heard you say. And currently, they've taken fifty thousand out. So, are you saying another three hundred thousand or three hundred thousand total? No, I am saying another 300,000 off the almost a million that's in there. Okay. So And I will I, I I'm not sure how you want me to do this. We could only do a straw poll and I would just ask those present whether they agree with you or not. And it's non-binding because the only thing we can legally do is change the bottom line of the budget. If you understand what I'm saying. I do. Okay, but... So take a straw poll. Okay, I will, but I will let Eric have a comment. So I don't... I do, just... <laughs> so just speaking as me and not necessarily as chair of the board or for the board, but I um, have sympathy with, with Rob's desire to use the fund balance toward uh, reducing taxes. I would... The one word of caution I would offer is that it looks like there's a really big amount in that um, fund balance. Uh, but if you imagine that we take 300,000 in offset taxes, we could do that this year for sure. We could do that next year. But then after that, we're not gonna have enough money to keep doing that. And so then it's gonna be a pretty big bump at some future year unless we slowly diminish the amount. I'm just saying is not a bad idea. We can work that fund balance down, but um, it may hurt on the way back up, just so you know. I, I understand that. Most of the emergencies that we've had in recent years have been partially funded by FEMA, and I agree with maintaining a sufficient fund balance for operations, but I think at this point, we are, we have a problem. And I think one way to mitigate that problem is to reduce that fund balance to a more reasonable number. Fair enough. You have, there are a lot of folks with hands up. Hi, Kaylee Kane. Um, I'm just wondering, since we have Casey Rowell, who's our business manager here, and knows all the exact numbers about what's committed for that fund balance, if we can ask her to come up with a number quickly, because she's a whiz, 
as to what would be appropriate based on what we already have committed and what we're already planning on spending, what could we appropriately take out this year? So because that's, that's, I, it, so so that's fine if you're asking. So I think uh, wh while we're working on that, we have other people who want to yes. comment. No, he's making a straw vote. You don't need a second. It's a non-binding straw vote. Because you cannot tell them where to take the money from. You can tell them how much to spend, but you cannot by law tell them that they have to take 300,000 from this pocket or 20 cents from you, other than taxes. That's the way the law's written. We can only do the bottom line. There was someone in the back. Um, I was wondering, oh, sorry, Name, please. Michael. Uh, Michael Lou Smith and Hardwick, wondering if we can get an estimate about how much that change of $300,000 would actually affect the tax rate. Okay, Casey, can, did you, the question was, where would that put the fund balance if we took the 300000 Oh, the tax rate? Okay, if we were to put that towards, what would it do to the tax rate? Okay, well the tax rate is based on the grand list as of July 1st, so we're really dealing with two separate issues here. If you wanted to take the 4018000 and literally subtract $300,000 of spending from that, if that's what you're asking. I, th I think they, they, I don't think so. I think it's the ask is to um, use an additional 300000 from the fund balance to offset taxes. So making okay. a total of three fifty, if I understood Rob correctly. A total of three fifty. Yeah. Okay. It's so the on property page taxes are only two thirty. Um, so nine of the town report. That's the increase. That of course we already are estimating using fifty thousand. If we change that number to three hundred and fifty thousand, it shows again approximate because we don't know the grand list, um, a decrease of one point nine nine percent in the box for the impact on a $100,000 home. It shows minus 1.99, so a decrease in the tax rate estimated. So just to be clear, clear, Casey, you're talking about um, if we looked on page nine, mm -hmm. where we're doing the projections for uh, the estimated tax rate, and Casey is noting that there's the caveat that um, the tax rate will be based on the grand list as set um, in July, which we don't know, so there's an estimate in here, but it's mm -hmm. just an estimate, and we always try to make that estimate conservative so that if there's a surprise, it's a good surprise, not a bad surprise. Mm -hmm. um, but you're saying that if we took an additional on the top where it says fund balance contribution to offset tax rate, if we change that from 50000 to 350000 the the percent increase on the tax rate goes from 8.84% to? Minus 1.99. Minus 1.99. So that's the effect. It's a substantial effect on the percentage change. Um, just a minute. There were more people, I, yep. there were more people in the back ahead of her. She had her hand up too. Oh, okay. okay. Tracy Martin from East Hardwick. So I just wanted to um, double check, and I think this is sort of what Kaylee was saying, but um, the fund balance that we're looking at in our report was as of June 30th, 2023. So that's eight months ago. So we're not currently sitting on that amount of money, correct? So hasn't that already been spent down to some extent? The 970? That was your year. We plan. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. Um, can we get, uh, Steve, could you pass that mic to Casey and she can just give her answer again t for the whole group? We anticipate using 125000 of the fund balance in the current fiscal year that we're in, which ends on June 30th. Um, and then we do have some money committed to the to the pedestrian bridge, um, approximately another 40,000. So if it all goes as planned, that balance would go down by another 165,000 by June 30th of this year. And so we would be closer to 800 at that point. Thank you. Okay, Rob, back over here. Oh, there's still more in the yeah. back, okay. Anybody? 
Was there still someone in the back that wished to speak? No, if not, then Rob up front here okay. in the white jacket. And Danny after, but I told Rob he could speak. Over here? Yep. I appreciate your input. Is that Stacy? Casey. Casey. I appreciate your input. What I am speaking of is today, not tomorrow, not next year. We have a need to take some action now, given the cost of everything. And as Mr. Hamill had suggested, we all have to live within our budgets. And unless we utilize the taxes already paid in by the citizens of Hardwick, then I think that we do them a disservice. And I stand by my straw poll request. Okay, thank you. And Danny, and then I'll get Paul. Danny Hale. So a couple of things. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's, it's great to see this turnout. We, have, uh, we meet twice a month up the Memorial Building on Thursday nights. And we discussed this budget probably a dozen times or more. Um, and, I, and I really, it would be, if you have these really solid questions and ideas, come to a meeting so we can have these discussions and try to work these things into the budget. As we already said, we started out at 14%. So we as a group, and, and the one person I think that's come up to talk to us about the budget, uh, you know, did feel we did a pretty good job of getting it to where we're still providing the essential services that we're all used to. Uh, there's no fluff in here. There's no extras. It is what it is. Um, so I would ask you folks, if you really truly want to make a difference in the budget, you need to come before today. Um, the second thing is, I know of several communities that are paying a fairly large interest rate right now on money they had to borrow to mitigate flood problems. It happened just last July. And for you folks that are saying we don't need a fund balance this large, you have a very, very short memory of what occurred in July and what it actually cost the town to get the roads open within two days. We spent four days going from where the trucks are parked to get to a gravel pit, to get to a better gravel pit, to get to a better gravel pit, just to get the roads back open for you folks. And that costs money, and it costs money right then. And that's why we have a fund balance. We also have a policy that's well written and discussed that says we want to have around 15 to 18 percent in that fund. Given the numbers Casey just gave us and the committed funds in the fund, we will be at that level come the end of this year. So if you take 300,000 out of there this year, and, and I hope we never have another situation like we had in July. But if we do, we're not going to have the money to do what we need to do. And, and this isn't a small business. This isn't a personal income. This is a municipality that has responsibility to every one of us equally to make sure that we can do the business we need to do. And, and that's what's in this budget. So I would ask you to think really seriously about spending the money that, that at least this board and, and most of you out here have worked years to build that so if there is a catastrophic event, um, we will be as prepared as we can be. So please think pretty seriously about this question. Okay, Paul Fix is next, way in the back. He's got the blue shirt down in the back. Hi, Paul Fix, Hardwick. It's not every day I agree with Danny, but that's what I'm here to say. I'll mark it on the calendar. And uh, I, I think the, I remember back 30 years ago when I was here and there wasn't fund balances and it cost all kinds of extra money for Hardwick at that point. Um, it seems to me we all know the budget's going to go up every year. So if we think there's a little more in that fund balance, what it means is we're not going to have to keep putting more in it as we go. And as the budget goes up over three, five years, 
that fund balance is going to be valuable to us. And the board has already looked at it and said, we had a tough year. We can use 50,000 of it to, to support the budget. So I would just say, look at the future of Hardwick. Look at what your taxes are going to look like in the future. And, and I think that balance is going to be valuable to us over the next three to five years. Thank you. Does anyone have anything different to say than hasn't already been spoken? We have a gentleman over here. I just, uh, Cody Sisk, I have a quick question. Um, Could you state your name, please? Cody Sisk. Okay, thank you. Um, with the with regards to the proposal, um, as I understand it, does that mean that it would be a net decrease in our taxes, or that was a percentage off of the 8%? Casey, net decrease? Yes, okay. it would be a net decrease in your taxes if you took the 300000 as Rob is suggesting. Got it. Okay. I just wanted to know that. On the tax rate. Okay. Okay, one quick question up here, and then I'm going to call for the straw poll. Front row, Raymond. Are you, are you saying that uh, the whole thing is... Uh, paid by us to fix these roads and stuff? Or does FEMA or somebody else help us out? Um, I, think, I think what Danny's trying to, trying to point out is that, yeah, FEMA is, will help us out. But um, as Opie stated in his opening remarks, um, so far they have one completed project that's into FEMA for funding. We're about nine months after the flood, and we don't have that money. So, when the flood occurs, or when whatever occurs, you need the money on hand, or you need to borrow it. Those are your options. FEMA's not gonna come in, like, this nine months later, yeah, they're gonna help us, but they haven't yet. So if you either need to have the money in hand, like in a fund balance type, or just in an account, or you need to borrow it. As How about a, as the account. state, do they help at all? The state has their own thing, but they're, they don't come and help us pay for you know the immediate repairs that yeah. comes out of our coffers so, the way FEMA the way FEMA works is uh, they reimburse our expenses 75 percent of the expenses um, some of the projects the certain categories of the projects the emergency repairs there's talk about them uh, the state has uh, agreed to pay the other 25%. So some of those projects will, will be paid at 100%, but typically it'll be 75% and then 12.5% from the state. So we'll have to cover what 7.5% or 12.5%. Okay, I want everyone to understand that this is a non-binding straw vote to give the select board direction. And the recommendation from Rob was to take an additional $300,000 from the, what's it called? Fund balance. Fund balance to be used to offset taxes. And according to Casey, that would reduce the taxes by about 0.199%. So basically they would stay even, no, it wasn't 1%, it was 0.19. 1%? Okay, so it'd be two, almost 2%. Okay, it would reduce it by almost 2% estimated, and that could change depending on how the grand list finishes out when they close the books on July 1st. All those in favor of suggesting to the select board that they take an extra $300,000 to reduce taxes for the fiscal year 25 budget from the fund balance, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. nay. The nays obviously have it, and the straw poll is a negative. And I thank you. Now we're back to the original motion of approving the budget of $4,018,083. And I have a motion and a second on the floor. Are you ready for the question? Okay, all those in favor of approving the budget as presented in our town report of $4,018,083, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Nay. 
the ayes have it and the budget passes. And thank you for a good discussion. It's been a long time since we've had one like that here. Moving on, I'll let him take his book, not mine. Moving on in the agenda to Article 7, what I'd like to do is what I did last year for appropriations. Six. Oh, yes, okay. With Article 6 through Article 20, the appropriations last year, we took them as a group. And then if anybody wanted to pull one or two out separately, we can do that rather than discuss each one separately because a lot of them are consistent. So is there any objection to my putting them before you as a group? Larry. Oh, there you go. Now, I, uh, I really, um, the few people that are in this room are going to decide $46,000 for the rest of the town. If we passed a hat around and every put five, body put $500 into it, that's exactly what we're going to come up with today. Uh, there's things on the appropriations that I definitely object to. Most of them uh, are consistent and they qualify, but if we can't take the time and if there's nobody here to speak for any of these groups and they've got their hand out for our money, then uh, I say we should vote no on those. And I believe we should take each one of them individually and uh, have some discussion. If we want to vote as a block to get people out of here quicker, then you shouldn't have bothered to come here in the first place. And that's my thought. Okay, is there, is, this is up to you as the voters. Do you wish to take the appropriations as a block? Please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. nay. It sounds almost 50-50, and I'm going to err with going separate. I don't want people jumping me after the meeting. <laughs> All of the um, explanations of who's asking for money and how much and why are found in the book on pages 26 to 35. I think you can read them yourself, so we'll start with Article 6. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $5,000 for the support of the Greensboro Nursing Home? What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Norma. Is there a second? A second from Jennifer. Any discussion, questions, comments? Is there nobody here to speak for this uh, appropriation? Okay. We have one up front. I am Sarah Morgan. I'm a former board member and the current medical director of the Greensboro Nursing Home. What do you want me to say? You want me to just uh, explain why the ask? Yes. Okay. So um, the appropriation request is $500 greater than last year, uh, which is less than the increase in the cost of the budget for the nursing home. Um, the nursing home is a 30 bed facility that I think is a pretty, um, does a great job of caring for some of the most vulnerable people in our community. Um, they have a pretty dedicated staff and administrative team that have done a really good job over the last few years um, during challenging times. I'm happy to answer any questions um, but the, the budget is always, always a stretch to uh, meet. The revenues don't necessarily match what people can afford to pay for long-term care. Um, and I think it's a, a pretty important resource for our community. There's a fair amount of hospice that is provided there as well for people who can't um, get that at home. So it's an end-of-life care option as well. Any other comments in regards to the Greensboro Nursing Home appropriation? Hearing none, all those in favor of supporting $5,000 for the Greensboro Nursing Home, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. 
Article 7, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $3,500 for the support of a where? What is your pleasure? Dave, is that you? Dave Shepard said, move the article. Is there a second? A name? You get it, Tanya? Any discussion on Article 7? Hearing none, all those in favor of supporting an appropriation to aware of $3,500, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 8, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $2,500 for the support of the Lamoille Family Center? What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave. Is there a second? Saw a hand. A name? Didn't hear you. Teresa Scott. Teresa Scott. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $2,500 for the support of the Lamoille Family Center, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Article 9. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $5,000 for the support of the Harduk Area Food Pantry? What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Ann Gilchrist, a second from Dave Shepard. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $5,000 for the support of the Harduk Area Food Pantry, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 10, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $2,600 for the support of the Caledonia Home Health Care and Hospice? What is your pleasure? Have a motion from Dave Shepard to approve. Is there a second? Jennifer seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor of appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $2,600 for the support of the Caledonia Home Health Care and Hospice. Please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 11. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $3,000 for the support of the Hardwick Community Television? What is your pleasure? Ann Gilchrist moves. Is there a second? Dave Shepard seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor of appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $3,000 for the support of the Hardwick Community Television, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Article 12, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $3,400 for the support of the Rural Community Transportation Incorporated? What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave Shepard. Is there a second? Any discussion? Larry? Uh, believe me, I'm not here just to uh, waste everybody's time, but uh, what uh, my objection to most of these things on the budget and the reason I'd like for people to speak to them is uh, what basically does Hardwick get from some of these uh, organizations? Okay, could you make uh, your comments? Say it again? Main, Larry, you have to talk about the rural community transportation. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Um, now, my, getting to my objection is what does uh, Hardwick get from rural county uh, transportation? Uh, I'm right in the middle of town. I see traffic go by all the time, and I haven't seen one of their buses or had anybody serviced in Hardwick, and I'd like to know what they contribute to the town of Hardwick. That's all. It's on page 34 in your book. They tell what they do in Hardwick. Uh, my name is Alex Jump. I've personally experienced folks who needed rides to rehab or to the hospital using rural transportation. You have to make an appointment 24 to 48 hours beforehand. They come and pick you up and then they bring you home. For people who do not have transportation, this is vital for our community. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you for speaking today. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $3,400 for the support of the Rural Community Transportation Incorporated, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Article 13, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $4,500 for the support of the Northeast Kingdom Council on Aging? What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave Shepard and ma'am, your name? Chris Knight. Lance has a second. Any discussion on Article 13 as I've read? Helm, we need a mic over on that side. It's coming. Just a minute. If you wish to make a comment, you need to stand. Pardon? Seconding the motion. Oh, okay. I already have a second, but thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $4,500 for the support of the Northeast Kingdom Council on Aging, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 14. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $2,100 for the sport of the North Country Animal League. What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave Shepard. Is there a second? Second from Ross Conley. Any discussion? He's coming. Give Steve a chance. That's your first mistake, giving me a microphone. Um, now, the uh, support of North Country Animal League is something I can speak directly to. I'm the animal control officer for the town of Hardwick for the past year. North Con and yes, I did read on page 31 their report. The uh, North Country Animal League has not taken one dog from me, and I've uh, tried several times. Uh, our town manager has tried several times, and uh, my predecessor, Dean Mercer, has tried several times, and we have not had any luck with North Country area. Animal League whatsoever. We have had, however, Justice for Dogs has been quite helpful, and we've worked with them extensively, and uh, would like to uh, say no to North Country Animal League and uh, give, uh, add the appropriation to Justice for Dogs. Thank you. I'll be with you in just a moment. Any other comments on Article 14? Um, I'm just reading Name, in the um, David Gross, East Hardwick. I'm noting that the um, claim they said they accepted 17 stray and surrendered animals to our shelter from Hardwick. So perhaps I would assume that people are bringing their animals there or they're finding the animals and bringing them directly because I doubt very much that they're falsifying the document. Thank you. Hi, Sherry. Hello. My name, can you hear me? Yep. My name is Sherry Olmsted, and I work for both organizations, and I spoke last year on this subject. I find it very distressing that I'm speaking uh, opposing Larry because I have a high regard for Larry. I'm delighted that he is in the position, but um, that particular position is, varies greatly according to who is filling it. I agree with the former comment that it may well be that people are bringing their animals to North Country because as we know, as we just witnessed, the money problem is enormous for everybody. Lots of people cannot feed their animal or as I can see from here, there's a lot of white hair in this audience <laughs> and these folks may have an animal that they want to, they know they need to give up, they can no longer care for or 
their near death door. And that makes a huge difference when you know you can take a very well cared for animal to a place that is warm and large and loving and can take adequate care of your aged animal. There's um, a few other things. Uh, there's a comment. Um, well, one thing that North Country does that Justice for Dogs is not prepared to do. As I say, I belong to both organizations. But, uh, but North Country teaches young people the art of empathy. And every single person in this room at one time was between the ages of one and four. And that is when we are most capable of learning anything that's presented to us. And empathy right now is in short supply everywhere in this country. And we know of no other organization that actually teaches empathy. Thank you. I have worked for 40 years on the problem of dogs and cats and animals being abused. And I have seen a lot of horror stories not stories, they were actualities that I walked in on. I have built and given away a hundred dog houses to dogs that were freezing. But some of the worst things are right in your backyard that you never see. And when dad comes home and he brings the desired puppy and the toddler says, wow, this is great and the puppy is well treated for a couple of days, but both dad and mom are busy, and it turns out to be a problem of uh, house training, and that puppy at some time gets slammed up against the wall because he made a mistake on the floor, and he goes to live outside, and the toddler witnesses this and sees that, oh, it's okay, we had an animal here that we cared for and gave love to and food, and, but now it's okay, it's outside, so that's all right. That's when you miss that lesson of empathy, right there. And uh, I won't go on, I can, vote, I can talk again when it comes time for Justice for Dogs. Thank you. Any other comments in regards to the Animal League? Ma'am, right here. Hi, I'm Emily Willems and I live in East Hardwick and I'd just like to say that North Country Animal League is a community partner with Hazen Union School and for many years, including this year, um, special needs kids from Hazen get their first introductory work experience there. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $2,100 for the support of the North Country Animal League? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Article 15. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $2,500 for the support of the commu Crassberry Community Care Center? What is your pleasure? I have a motion to, uh, to accept from David and a second from Ann Gilchrist. I'm picking on people whose names I know. Any discussions in regards to the donation to the Crassberry Community Care Center? Hearing none, all those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $2,500 for the support of the Crassberry Community Care Center, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. And I aired earlier, Crassberry Care Center has a table outside in the lobby, and if you give them a suggestion, I think they're the ones that you can get a gift from, maybe. But check them out, they're out there. And the motion carries. Shall the town, Article 16, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $1,000 for the support of Justice for Dogs. What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave Shepard to approve. Is there a second? Kevin Moore has a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $1,000 for the support of Justice for Dogs, 
please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Article 17. Shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $3,500 for the support of the Northeast Kingdom's Art Council, incorporated known as NEC Arts? What is your pleasure? Dave Shepard has a motion to accept. Is there a second? Ross, I can come up with his name, Ross Codley. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $3,500 for the support of the Northeast Kingdom Arts Council, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Article 18, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $4,000 for the support of the Center for an Agricultural Economy. What is your pleasure? Ma'am? Emily? And Dave Shepard seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $4,000 for the support of the Center for an Agricultural Economy, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Article 19, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $1,500 for the support of the Salvation Farms Incorporated? What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave Shepard. Is there a second? Ma'am? Name? Deb Hart. Any discussion? Mike's coming. Hi, Jessica Gebby, Morrisville, so yes, permission um, to speak. Does anyone object if she speaks in regards to the, hard, the Salvation Farms? She's not from Hardwood. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to highlight Salvation Farms. Um, we move surplus produce off of about 45 farms um, into community meal sites, in particular Hardwick Area Food Pantry. Um, over the last four years, about a million servings to people around here from local produce, otherwise would go uneaten um, at no cost to farmers and the food sites, so thanks. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $1,500 for the support of the Salvation Farms Incorporated, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Shall the Article 20, shall the town appropriate a sum of money not to exceed $2,800 for the support of the Hardwick Downtown Partnership, Inc.? What is your pleasure? David Shepard moves and Kathy Unsler seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor of the town appropriating a sum of money not to exceed $2,800 for the support of the Hardwick Downtown Partnership, Inc., please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Now my favorite ones. Article 21, shall the town authorize a select board for a period of one year to enter into contracts with new industrial and commercial owners lessees, baileys of real property, or with existing or new owners, lessees, baileys, or operators who construct, acquire, or renovate industrial and or commercial real property, including additions to existing property for the purpose of fixing and maintaining the municipal rate applicable to such real property, or for the purpose of fixing the amount of money which shall be paid as an annual municipal tax upon such real property pursuant to the provision of Title 24, Vermont Statutes Annotated, Section 21, 2741. One sentence. What is your pleasure? I have a motion to approve from Dave Shepard. Is there a second? Kevin Moore, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of Article 1, as I previously read, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay, and the motion carries. Article 22, shall the town authorize a select board for the period of one year 
to enter into contracts with operators of agricultural real property or with existing or new owners, lessees, baileys, or operators who construct, acquire, or renovate, or who intend to construct, acquire, or renovate agricultural real property for the purpose of fixing and maintaining the valuation of such real property in the grand list for the purpose of fixing and maintaining the municipal rate applicable to such real property or for the purpose of fixing the amount in money which shall be paid as an annual municipal tax upon such real property pursuant to the provisions of Title 24, Vermont Statutes Annotated, Section 2741. What is your pleasure? I have a motion from Dave Shepard. Is there a second from Larry Hamill? Any discussion? All those in favor of Article 22 as previously read, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. And the motion carries. Article 23, to transact any other non-binding business proper to be brought before such meeting. Yes. My name's Elizabeth Dow, and I'm standing here as president of the Hardwick Historical Society. When you went through your list of appropriations, <clears throat> did you notice that we did not ask for $3,000 this year? We did not because we knew this is a hard year for Hardwick tax voters, taxpayers, and our coffers were comfortable enough that we thought is as a gift to the taxpayers, we would not ask for another $3,000. The other thing that just occurred to me is that in the middle of the 19th century, I read, I read a lot of proceedings of town meetings. In the middle of the 19th century, the grand list, the, the tax rate on the grand list was anywhere from 35 to 50 percent. We're looking at 8 percent, maybe, depending on what the grand list turns out to be. As you're, as you're thinking about it, just think to yourself, it could be a lot worse. This could be 200 years ago, and I'm paying 50% on my grand list value. Did anyone else have anything to offer? Just a minute, he'll bring the... Hello, I'm not sure this is the right moment to ask this question, but I have a bingo card, and there's one square that I need to get filled. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the woman select board member sitting right next to Opie to please state your name. <laughs> Thank you, bingo! <laughs> Um, we'll get to the next speaker, but I aired at the beginning, um, I always try to tell you folks what's out in the lobby so you are almost forced to stop and look around. The Kiwanis has a table, they're looking for help for the parade this spring festival. As I said, the Crassberry Care Center has a raffle that's going and it sports donations from around the area. Paul Fix is out there with the Northeast Kingdom broadband in updates, and HomeShare is new, and it works with the state, and they're out of South Burlington to put empty rooms in our homes with people that they have vetted, and it's for Hardwick, Greensboro, and Crassberry, if you are interested in that. And then Hardwick Downtown, if you give them feedback, they're the one that has a, ra a raffle, and there's Civic Standard is out there, with the bingo and they have prizes for people that get bingo. Last year my name was on there. And they also have food by donation and I didn't get on the stage but I don't believe there's anybody up there this year. Okay, so now anybody else have a comment? There was a gentleman there, if you'd stand, or a lady, okay, stand and give your name. Hi, Deborah Hart. I just wanna say that I miss, um, I'm gonna miss Lorraine Hussey getting us all geared up for the corned beef and cabbage dinner because it always made me laugh. 
She was a wonderful woman and she knew Harduk history. Thank you for doing that. Uh, hi, I'm David O'Brien. Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Gail and I live in East Hardwick. Um, and I um, want to echo Eric's uh, recognition of Opie. Um, Gail and I were um, victims of the flood as several people in this room were. And um, he, along with Kristen and other of the town staff have been amazing in um, assisting us uh, through some complicated um, journey and still is to this day. So as he stood up for us, I would ask us to stand up for him and thank him for his work. I got one over there, man. Come back. Thank you for doing that, David. And I'd like to, and I'd like to recognize uh, Wiz Dow for her years of service on the select board. She's not running for re-election this year, so thank you, Wiz. Anyone else? I Nancy? would like to ask for a straw vote approving a petition or whatever action is needed from the State of Vermont Department of Education for Hardwick to look into um, divorcing or leaving the force merger for Act 46 and bringing Hardwick Elementary back to uh, individual town school and our own school board. And my name's Jennifer Laundrie. Any comments? Anybody else wish to make a comment in regards to that? And she's asking for a straw vote, so I feel that I have to ask if there would be support for what Jennifer said. You don't need it. It's just a non-binding, um, a straw poll. Yes, ma'am. So Hardwick has 222 out of the 300 students in the Mountain View Union School Districts. Some, not all of the reasons for wanting to leave this merger is unsustainable per pupil spending at some campuses. The budget is up 10.4%. Taxes, depending on what the state does, um, last known was 12%. Um, there's no drinking water in Woodbury. Hardwick pays 74% of the budget based off what we have for students. Hardwick does not have fair representation, leadership on the board when you look at it per pupil. Um, fiscal responsibility to the town. One of the school campuses one of the three campus model, it was supposed to be one school, three campuses, and that is not how this is running. Um, Hardwick facilities may get attention and support, which has been delayed, in particular the playground, the ability to plan for the future, and capital projects is not really happening. Hardwick makes the best school to educate young children in our community, and I feel like bringing the leadership back and bringing our resources here is way more beneficial for our student and taxpayers. Okay, sorry everybody. Turns out it, I did know a little bit about it and I didn't, didn't know exactly the connection. But is the school, I can't remember if it's Mountain View or Lakeview, but I, I don't have any way to access Front Porch Forum here, but I've read, just since this is a straw poll, if you want to find out a little, a, a, a different opinion about how to do the figures, um, 
I read that you can't really separate the schools out because of how the funding is provided. So I'm just going to direct you to, I think it was yesterday's Greensboro Front Porch Forum for Carl, I forget Carl's last name, Stein. Carl Stein's posting about it. So I'm just saying, just, just if you want to find out other views about it, too. Thank you. Any other comments? Raymond, up front? Oh, we've got another one over here. Beth LaCour from East Hardwick. Um, Meredith, I, I am an avid reader and have supported education in all of our towns. This is completely separate than what we're voting on. This is um, the idea, you know, that Hardwick would go back to having control of its school in its town rather than being split between three or four towns. And the idea is that Hardwick then would have control of their fiscal responsibility, the leadership and management of the board, and obviously of the education of the children in the town. Um, when the first force merger happened, it was something that no one had ever thought that this would um, come to the way it is of pitting neighbor against neighbor. And I've sat at all of these meetings for so many years. And the idea of equitable, depending on which side of the fence you're on, but the reality is that I personally have watched in this building, in this town, our students in Hardwick take less where other students get more. And it's not okay with me anymore. I also, my hair is getting white. I put lots of hours and lots of days in for all of the towns. And I just want it to be fair and equitable. And the only way that I can see that to happen is if we take control of leadership and the school for ourselves here again. Thanks. Sherry over here on the outside. Are we still discussing the golf hole? Yes. Okay. For Act 46. Okay. Raymond, were you in regards to the school? Raymond Bellavance right here. I believe that uh, Greensboro is going to close anyhow. They lost a teacher, they lost a music teacher, so it's only one teacher and the principal. And why keep it open? I mean, we could bring that money back to Hardwick and pay our teachers more and get better teachers if we have to, instead of paying all that money out. Around three million we pay out for uh, outsider. So, that's my opinion. Anything else? Okay, again, this is a non-binding straw vote on whether if the process went through, if Hardwick voters would support taking back the Hardwick Elementary School, and it's called divorcing the forced merger of Woodbury Standard, Greensboro, and Hardwick. All those in favor of looking into it and supporting that part of it signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Can I ask for art? When we're done this discussion, I will. I just see that he arrived. I am going to ask for those in favor to please stand so I can get a count. And those that are already standing, raise your hand if you're voting yes. Could I get someone to count? Support. Okay. So my left hand side could sit down. Yep. Rain, uh, Eric's getting the one. And then, did you get the one up by the polling booth? Okay, so she can put her hand up. I get 21. So. Okay, that's close enough. So we have 32 yes. How many? No, you can all sit down now. And then the no's, please stand. That's fine, that's fine. 
Okay, it's obvious that there's not 32 of you standing, so we have a straw vote that says yes. Was there anything else that you wish to bring up at this point? Nancy, Sherry? Yes, Sherry. It takes a village to put on a spring festival. I'm wearing my Kiwanis hat today. Um, I'm here with a non kwanian but friend of Kiwanis, uh, Nancy Notterman, and we are looking for volunteers. Um, we have two dozen Kiwanis members who work very hard, but the Spring Festival is a very big event. We have a table on the back, and we would love to have you volunteer, and it doesn't have to be your uh, hours, but it could be. It could be um, making prizes for games. It could be lending us a 10 by 10 canopy tent. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can help and be a part of the Spring Festival. So uh, check it out when you, on your way out and sign up to, to help us and be a part of the Spring Festival. Thank you. Eric? Oh, I can do that. Okay, and I just, just, I'm going to just do a quick introduction. The whole head table can introduce themselves. I should have done that at the beginning of the meeting. Start with Eric. Hi, I'm Eric Remick. Hope we upset. See, I'm Sherry Cornish. Then you would have gotten it. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Dow. Haley Galloway Kane. Danny Hale. Mike Henry. And Mike Henry is our interim police chief. Did you want to say anything, Mike? Everybody else spoke? No? Okay. Comment in the back. Hi, my name's Deborah Hart. I live in East Hardwick. I'm the um, current coordinator for the Four Winds program at the Heart of Elementary School. And the Four Winds program is a super cool environmental education program where it's run by volunteers. Um, and the Four Winds um, group, obviously, they supply me with um, um, educational materials, but it's super fun. We do need volunteers. We're super low on volunteers this year, but it's an absolutely amazing program. It's a great experience to get into the classrooms. If you don't already, if you don't have children in the school right now, it's wonderful to meet these kids and meet the educators. Um, if you do have kids in the classroom right now, it's even more fantastic for you because you get to be in the classroom with your children and see what's going on. We're doing, we're dissecting owl pellets this month, which is just amazing. Um, it's just so much fun and I really want to encourage anybody who has any interest to contact me. Um, you can find my number in the phone book under HART, H-A-R-T-T. -T. Thank you so much. Anybody else over here? Paul. Sure. I'm scared of you. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Fix. I'm Hardwick's appointed rep to the Northeast Kingdom Broadband Communication Union District. Our goal job is we're a municipal entity working to bring high-speed fiber optic internet to Caledonia, Orleans, Essex County, and Wolcott in our neighboring county. Uh, for years, I've been standing here maybe two or three times telling you, it's coming, it's coming. Well, guess what? It's coming. And <laughs> along Route 15 from Joe's Pond this way, you've probably seen if you've driven trucks installing things, that's fiber optic line. If you've been in Greensboro, you've seen them replacing poles. What I have here today is a map that shows what's coming in 2024. So because of Hardwick's ARPA funding, we're going to have service up West Hill to an emergency services repeater, all the way up to, what's that, Tucker Brook Road. So that's coming in 2024, all the way from the school out Bridgman Hill to the Greensboro Town Line, and some side roads are going to have service along Route 15, um, up to Pumpkin Lane, and along Hopkins Hill, should have service by the end of the year. So it's pretty exciting to be able to tell you these things are happening. We 
one of the big issues we're going to have over the next several years with lots of federal money coming down is workforce development. So if you know young people who aren't afraid to climb poles and who have fine motor skills to splice fiber optic cables, it's an interesting combination of someone who wants to work outside in the freezing cold and do really specialized things. It pays really well. Come find me, go to nekbroadband.org. There's information for whoever you know who might look, want to be looking for that kind of work. It's great work for electrical service, electrical utility people who don't want to climb up where they could kill themselves easily. It's a lot safer down low where there's phone lines and things. So anyway, that's the big takeaway today is we're looking for people to do the work. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yes, we have a question over here. Paul, don't walk away yet. I think it's some questions for you. Steve's headed with the mic. Hi, it's Meredith Holt. What? Question for Paul. Um, I noticed it's going up Route 15 to Pumpkin Lane. What about East Hardwick? Do you have any idea when we're going to get on that schedule? Thank you. I don't have any detail beyond 2024. There is a, a 17 and a half million uh, USDA loan that's paying for a lot of this work above and beyond ARPA. There's another 229 million coming down from the feds that we hope to see 100 million of that would then fund the next round, which would include probably Center Road and East Hardwick and places like it that. It better. <laughs> <laughs> but don't don't quote me on that. It's it's not it's not even designed yet. Did you have a question, David? No. Oh, all right. Thanks everyone. Any other comments to come up before I ask for a motion to adjourn? I have a I have a comment. Okay. My name is Microphone Man. <laughs> and I I urge and I the citizens respectfully to consider having a second microphone so I don't have to run around the room. <laughs> but, uh, no, I just have one public comment. I want to thank the Hardwick Police Department. My name is Steve Fortman, a resident of Bridgman Hill, for their efforts to combat drug-related crime, specifically in my community, uh, the risks that officers take when they respond to drug-related crime. and. Uh, and ask for your continued efforts to, to fight drug-related crime in Hardwick and all the communities around you. Thank you. It's somewhat over here in back. Oh, Chip's here. Okay. I didn't recognize you. Uh, Dave Shepard, I was really pleased to see you dedicated the report to Jean Hackett. She was definitely my favorite math teacher, and she was a great citizen and coach. And myself and one of my sisters became engineers, and another sister became a math teacher. So uh, it was long overdue. Thank you very much. That was the select board. Oh, she's over in the corner. Yay, Jean! Jean is one of the poll workers today. Our representative for Montpelier, Chip Torono, is here. He's from Standard, so I have to ask if there are any objections to him giving us an update. If not, I don't see any, Chip. Come ahead. Madam Moderator. So um, I'll try to be brief. I know it's getting a little bit late. Um, I thought the conversation around uh, consolidation was really interesting to me. Uh, um, Act 46 came about in my freshman year uh, in the State House, and I voted no on it because I didn't think consolidation was a good idea. Um, and uh, I was told over the next year or so that, uh, by the Secretary of Education that, oh, we had enough students and that we had the requisite uh, 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 structure in order for it not to happen. And then, boom, about a month before it was due, 
uh, we were hit with consolidation. So I appreciate um, the conversation that went on here, and I think that um, in the event that uh, actually um, I was part of a committee that uh, filed a lawsuit against it, and uh, uh, it didn't prevail. So um, I, I understand your situation, your position, and I have no opposition to it. And certainly, if it comes uh, to the legislature, I would support it as I did um, uh, four, or five, five or six years ago. Um, while I'm on education, um, I have uh, looked into it and. Uh, um, Act uh, 127, a lot of people have been hearing about it. It's a, it was a, 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 a law that was passed that, um, uh, based on a waiting study uh, that uh, said that it was inequitable for us to fa fund special needs uh, in every school district. And as a result of that, Act 127 was passed and signed into law by the governor uh, that uh, put more resources into um, districts that needed them more. And Hardwick was one of those districts. Uh, so after my conversation with uh, uh, your, our superintendent and uh, some school board members, uh, I have found that um, Hardwick is in good shape. Um, your budget um, is uh, within your means. Um, you will not see a massive increase in your uh, property, school property taxes, uh, and that's the good news for today. Um, and uh, hopefully will be, uh, it will continue. You know, um, I don't have a lot of agreement down in Montpelier, but uh, you know, I've been a lister up in Standard for 48 years, and I noticed that um, funding, education funding uh, programs last about six or eight years, and Act 60 is probably in its cl getting close to 20 years old. And I really think that we need to take a, a better look uh, at how we finance education and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and see if about putting a new uh, property uh, a new uh, education funding uh, system in place. The issue is that it takes a massive amount of work, and um, if you've got a, a relatively new committee uh, on education, sometimes it's a real difficult heavy lift for for folks to do that. Um, so. Uh, I left a, um, I left a, uh, a sheet uh, on the back table there with uh, lots of information about uh, what's been going on. Uh, briefly, we ch last year we passed the child care bill. It really meant a lot to me because, um, you know, for the last five or six years we've been paying people $5,000 to move to Vermont. Um, that really didn't sit well with me. I don't think spending $6 million is a good uh, – it's, it's a worthwhile uh, proposition. So uh, what – what I think is that, you know, we need to uh, keep and attract young families to the state of Vermont. And what's been holding some back some, uh, somewhat is uh, uh, the, the uh, cost of child care. Uh, so um, last year we passed a sweeping child care bill, uh, which will incentivize uh, child care centers uh, with subsidies that will allow them to uh, pay their help uh, better and provide um, uh, benefits uh, so that they can uh, uh, they, they can um, uh, increase uh, the number of slots. So being in the legislature for 10 years, I have to say that this bill hit the ground and, and hit our community, communities faster than just about any other bill that I've seen. In one year, we've opened up hundreds of child care slots in the state of Vermont. Uh, we have um, staffed them with uh, young folks that have um, been incentivized for tuition uh, reimbursement and grants uh, to study early childhood education so that we can provide affordable, high-quality child care uh, in, our, in our communities. We also uh, have subsidized workers because we found that uh, a third of many people's incomes were going to pay for child care. So this, in my opinion, this will attract and, and, and keep young families in Vermont. And what does that do for us? That, creates a situation where um, folks are paying property taxes, they're paying taxes, they're paying, and they're putting their children in schools and they're relieving some of the issues around uh, low uh, uh, enrollment rates in our schools. So that's a really, it was a really important piece to me. Um, housing, I spent four years on the General Housing Committee and uh, in the past uh, three years we've created an, uh, or improved uh, 1,890 uh, rental apartments and, ho uh, and homes statewide. Um, we've expanded shelter capacity by 198 beds. Uh, we've improved uh, shelter beds by 496. So we've done quite a bit, but there's still more to do. And uh, just last week, 
after quite a, quite a bit of uh, wrangling with hotel owners, motel owners, uh, we have uh, managed to lower the nightly rate for motel stays from $135 to $80. That'll expand our ability to keep that program going for a little bit longer. Uh, we have been making progress in getting folks uh, into homes, and uh, it's important that uh, we continue to do that because there are still a number of families that um, are not, uh, are not uh, housed at this point. Um, um, my work on pollinator protection, uh, which started here with a group in Hardwick, uh, continues when we, now we are, are uh, looking to ban uh, treated seeds. Um, we have uh, evidence that there is no, uh, or there, I should say there's no evidence that we, um, uh, that uh, treated seeds with neonicotinoids uh, increase crop yield in any way. Um, so based on that, we're looking to uh, take neonicotinoids uh, off, uh, off of the uh, treated seeds. Um, school meals program. <laughs> that, that movement started here in Hardwick. I met in the at the library with a number of folks who told me that they wanted me to move on this, and I did. This is the third bill uh, that we have passed out that uh, will protect our pollinators because we all know, and every time I speak to someone, we all know that without pollinators, we don't have a lot of our food. And that's so, it's really, really important and it's a real easy connection to make. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll wind it up because I, I, I want to open up to questions. Uh, we faced a huge amount of damage uh, in the Capitol complex this year as a result of the July floods. Uh, so we're, t we're looking in terms of millions of dollars of damage. Um, building, uh, the uh, Division of Building and, and General Services has really done a bang up job. We have all but four buildings back online. Um, and uh, we're working hard, uh, and we're just about to settle with our insurance company, which will open us up to uh, FEMA, and um, at, with all that damage, we're looking probably um, at 1% of uh, the cost uh, in cost sharing with FEMA. So I'll open it up to questions, anyone, for anyone. <laughs> okay, thanks all for letting me speak, and... Um, Yes, me too. Thank you. Take care, Chip. Yeah, okay. I'm sure it's stuff I need my stool. Anything else to come before the meeting? If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order, please. Thank you. All. You're most welcome. My pleasure. But I need a motion. Okay. I got a lot of them. Kevin and there was a hand. Tracy. Tracy. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. You may stay here. Don't forget to vote on your way out and check the tables in the hall. Thank you very much. And we adjourned earlier than last year. <laughs>